Yo, what is going on guys? Jack here, and welcome to episode 23 of our Tracksuit to the Top series here with Lewis FC in the Vadarama Conference. Hopefully you guys are good. Today I have for you guys a commentary that I didn't think I was going to do, but I suddenly decided last minute I was going to do. Controversial and confusing, I know. Anyway, um, it is against Gateshead. We've only actually played three games since the last episode, which was the 1-1 draw against Wickham. Uh, the first result was actually a defeat to Wickham in uh, the FA Trophy. Really disappointing. Jake Heskov getting sent off really didn't help us much. Uh, the next game we beat Harrogate 3-1. Uh, Chibola getting uh, two goals. Very good performance by this guy, the centre mid. He's been a very valuable asset to the team. You can see he's performed really well for us. And uh, he maintained his level of performance there. And then in our last game, we beat Dartford 2-1. This time Ryan Seeger and Barnes with the goals. Both coming just after the half-time. So anyway, did I have you guys a game against Gateshead? I actually advanced the match date by accident because I was getting a bit excited to hit continue. So I've locked in a squad that I might not necessarily have picked, but we'll go with it. It's still a pretty darn strong side. It's actually the side that played my last game, so I can't complain too much. It was the team that beat Dartford, and they've had plenty of time to rest. Six days is more than enough time, so I'm not too worried. Uh, in terms of where we line the league on the back of those two wins against Harrogate and Dartford, you can see here we're actually in third. Uh, our game today is against Gateshead. If we win this, we'll actually go top of the table. If we lose, we'll go five points behind Gateshead who are top of the table. If we draw, um, we'll be two points behind Chester and Gateshead at the top of the table. Uh, the two teams that we beat were... Um, who were they? They were Dartford. Where are Dartford? Dartford are 10th and Harrogate who are 21st. So two good wins, but two wins that you'd expect. Looking at the league table, there is only... Uh, 12 games left including this one so we're starting to get to crunch time we've played a lot of the harder games so I'm quite optimistic for our chances here going into the end of the season not sure when the next live comp's going to be I, I'm kind of playing it by ear at the moment because the league is so tight at the top of the table it's difficult to know who you're actually going to be playing who's kind of in contention I mean realistically Alfredton in 8th all the way up to Chester in 1st are all separated by 6 points the league's ridiculously close and so it's kind of difficult to judge which games to live comp and which not to but anyway as I mentioned, this is going to just be a slightly shorter episode because we're just doing this one game. But we're going to get into today's game. I'm optimistic of our chances. Let's get our assistant on the instructions. We can go top of the table here, boys. I expect nothing there less. Nothing else either. We've got a real chance here. I mean, to be honest, since the new acquisitions to the squad in October, we've been onwards and upwards. Even before, um, you know, we kind of basically signed a brand new first team for the most part. Uh, we were really challenging at the top of the table. Oh, not at the top of the table, but we were we were in mid-table, but we were scoring a lot of goals. But if we give away a penalty after three minutes, we're not going to win this game. But what I was trying to say was that, um, you know, since we've had our new players come in, we've certainly been on the up. I mean, before signing them, I believe we were the top goal-scoring team in the league, and certainly the new acquisitions have firmed us up at the back, made us better defensively, and... Um, I don't know, it's just helped us improve, I guess, and taken us to that next level, which is now seeing us in a realistic position to challenge for the title. However, as I mentioned, giving away a penalty after three minutes here away against Gateshead, who are kind of one of your title rivals, is certainly not ideal. Chibola is pretty... well, he's, he's got a knock and he's looking a little bit worse for wear. So we'll bring on Ben Bacon, get him on the pitch. Um, but yeah... We'll see how we get on here. Um, it, it's going to be tricky. Look at the stats. We've had 70% of possession. It looks like we're really dominating, but of course Gateshead making the most of that penalty decision uh, that went their way and they buried it. But maybe this chance is for us to get back into this year. I mean, it's still early days. As I mentioned, we are dominating the play at the moment, and we are having possession quite nicely here. Seager, that is a poor layoff to answer the inside forward. Wanted him to come a little bit shorter to help with the link at play with the striker there, but that's one of my issues, I guess, with inside forwards this year. Anyway, they've got a cross in. Dicky Rooney, okay, that is really poor marking. That's Gateshead's second shot of the game. It's their second clear-cut chance. Defensive laps are costing us right here. Look at it here. Uh, Ollie running down the right, whips in the ball near post. Dicky with a, just a, a terrible clearance, and it finds its way in. Not ideal, not ideal. And now Gateshead again with a chance, and that is a free header from a corner. That's been given as a clear-cut chance. That's probably the end of the highlight. I need to tell the players to switch on. Show some passion, boys. 26 minutes in. We've had more over the play, but Gateshead are looking good for their lead. You know, they've had those two clear cut chances and they've taken them both. I've granted they missed that third one from the corner. Now Torrell's injured. Oh my gosh. What's happened to my team? What has happened to my team? Serious question right now. Um, I'm really limited in my options. 
Uh, can Reese Mitchell play centre mid? No, he can't. Right. Well, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to mix things up a little bit here. Um. Yeah, we'll play Isaac Hayden higher up the pitch. Unfortunately, I only put one centre mid on my bench for this game. But we'll, we'll make a few changes, see if we can get something going our way. So we're going to switch to a 4-2-3-1. Um, uh, maybe pack the midfield a little bit more. Who knows, maybe that extra man in the midfield can help us break the deadlock. Because right now we're looking good. We've just not created too many clear-cut opportunities. But we've got a chance here, potentially. Seager, Barnes, that is a fantastic passing goal. Great play out on the left-hand side. Ball eventually makes its way over to Barnes on the far side uh, to where the initial build-up play had happened. Lots of nice, crisp passing there. Cheeky back kill by Ben Bacon. Seager lays it off. Barnes on his left foot. Tucks it away. Great finish. Love having inside forwards, obviously, with left and right footiness on the side. They cut in on just for stuff like that. Barnes drifting his way in. Lands on his left foot, and he buries it. And looking at the stats, we've been the better team. So I'm going to tell the boys they've been unlucky so far, which they're loving because we have been unlucky. And I'm also going to tell them I now have faith in them to really turn things around in this second half and potentially get us a win. Certainly a point is what we're looking for. Gateshead, they've had three shots. Really, like we, we've been the better team, but we need to make that count on the scoreboard. We've got a chance here. Mitchell whips in. Hyam, oh my gosh, it's been cleared off the line. That was a fantastic opportunity, but dealt away there by Gateshead. And now they're on the break. They've got a lot of men forward. Now Rooney's through. Can we deal with this? Ball pulled across. Mullen grasps the ball and he has done a fantastic job for us. But yeah, we're looking okay. We're looking okay. We've not actually had a clear cut chance yet. We've just taken that one really good opportunity. But we've been the better team. I feel like it's a matter of time. We've just got to maintain this performance. Hope we don't get any more injuries. Answer with a real chance there to draw it all level. But he misses it. Wanted him to hit the target really there, cutting in, and now he gets a knock too. I can't really afford to take him off because I don't want another injury. According to my assistant, he might be able to run it off. We're going to have to put faith in that. But that's certainly not ideal. Um, I've only got that one sub left, and I don't really want to use it prematurely, especially when we've already used two. So we're going stick to stick with answer for at least a little bit yet. But realistically, I've got to, got to change something soon. There's a highlight. Are we on the attack here? Barnes, Seager down the line, uses his pace to get there. Options inside Mitchell. Hayden. Ants has scored a few goals whilst having knocks this year. I should point that out. It, like, it's a weird thing. When he gets a knock, he just scores. Go on, Ben Bacon. Donnelly out wide. Whips in the ball. Seager's there. Oh, the keeper makes a fantastic save, and the ball cannot find its way into the box by Ants. We've been all over them. We have been all over them, but we've not made it count. And that's disappointing. Looking at it, two clear-cut chances. Neither of them we've taken. And time is starting to slip away just a little bit. And now Seager's injured. Excellent. Well, it's a good job I didn't use that sub. Elliot Lee, get on the pitch, my son. Three knocks. I'm, pl I'm playing it safe. I, I, I mean, you can't really afford to keep players with knocks on. That's like I've seen a lot of people complain about injuries this year in FM. It partially comes down to your training, obviously, because I didn't rotate my side between this game and the previous game because I accidentally locked in the squad. That's really not helped me. Um, but a little bit unlucky, perhaps, of injuries here. But playing it safe, you know, no point in playing players with knocks potentially making their injuries worse, but it's looking like this is going to slip away from us this game, which is really disappointing because we've been by far the better team. There might be one late, late chance, but I really can't see there being one. Um, unfortunate. I think this kind of shows that we are capable of beating even the highest teams in the league, but we need to do more than what we've done here. 2-1 defeat, but we had four times as many shots as them. I'm not happy, boys. I'm not happy. They're, they've responded well to that. That does mean that we lose um, a little bit of ground on Gateshead, who are now top of the league. But there is still 11 games left. There is still a lot of football left to be played. Um, realistically, looking at our next games, we've got Alfred Tinua, 8th, Kidderminster, 24th, Grimsby, 11th, Braintree, Eastley, Woking, Forest Green, Stallybridge, Nuneaton, Wrexham and Epsfleet. A lot of those games are against lower kind of table teams. I think we've got Alfredton in 8th. Um, Grimsby and Braintree in 11th and 12th and then Wrexham in 5th and they're the last kind of big teams light in the top half of the table so in our last 11 games only 4 of them are top half teams so really we should be winning most of them I'd hope and I'm hoping that might give us a chance of winning the title but time will tell um, obviously if we've got some injuries which it looks like we're going to have 
um, that's not going to make things easy. Answer out for eight to eleven days. Spola out for five to six days. It's not looking great. It's not looking great, but we're unfortunate there. And as I mentioned, there's some nice, easier results coming our way. But anyway, I don't know when the next episode's going to be. Um, I'm going to kind of play it by ear, as I mentioned, and uh, see what games kind of bear real significance potentially. Uh, hopefully, you guys enjoy this episode. As I mentioned, a slightly shorter one just because obviously it was a big game to commentate and there's only been three games since the previous episode. But hopefully you guys enjoyed regardless. If you did, smash the like button. Hopefully you guys will stick around for next episode. Uh, and I'll see you guys then. So this is me, Jack, and I'm out. I'll talk to you guys in a bit.